Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Vignesh. I work with the Embedded Software Tools at Vector. And in this video, we're going to look at how to get started with the DaVinci Configurator's automation interface. The DaVinci Configurator provides a powerful automation interface to perform various actions during the configuration of Microsoft Classic projects. This feature is inbuilt so it does not require any additional installation of languages for scripting or any additional licenses to activate this feature. The scripts are written in the Groovy language. You can, of course, find more information on the Groovy homepage. And there are two ways in which you can write these scripts and execute them. The first one is you can have a very simple text editor, Notepad++, VS Code, any text editor that you are comfortable with. You can write a script in the Groovy language, you save it in the .groovy format, and then load this inside the DaVinci Configurator. And then when you execute it, DaVinci Configurator will then update the DaVinci project. The other possibility is, of course, that you could have a scripting project. Here we recommend the IntelliJ IDEA IDE from JetBrains. You can use this to set up a scripting project. This, of course, gives you a lot more features, such as autocomplete, checking of definitions, some documentation inside the ID itself, which helps you to write scripts quite easily. And once you have completed editing the script, you are then going to run a build to build the jar file. And this jar file is loaded into the DaVinci Configurator to then update the DaVinci project. You can also, of course, use this uh, setup to debug scripts in case you have any issues and you want to understand why your scripts may not be working. There are, of course, some requirements when you want to get started with a script project. First, of course, is that you are using the Microsoft Classic Basic software, which also contains our DaVinci Contributor installation. You require the Java 8 software development kit, you require Gradle, which is used to build the script project. And the version of Gradle depends upon the version of the DaVinci Configurator that you're using with your Microsoft Classic project. And finally, the JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA is used as a development environment to write and then build the scripts. But don't worry, we do have documentation. Directly within the DaVinci Configurator, you, you can find within the Help menu access to the Getting Started, to the automation interface, you have the complete documentation and also the Java documentation describing the different APIs. You also have some examples to get you started, simple ones to print Hello World, to read various parameters, to write some parameters. All of these examples can be found inside the installation of the DaVinci Configurator. And we have some further more interesting examples that you can find on our vector knowledge base. I will, of course, provide the link to the knowledge base in the video description. In the DaVinci Configurator, you will find two tabs, script locations and script tasks. If you don't see them, you can always add them from the view menu. So we'll switch to the script tasks window and then click on the create new script project. Click on the next button. We will choose the default automation script. You can, of course, choose any of the other one based on your use case. Specify a project. Save it in my D drive. And then choose the appropriate option to download the Gradle distribution. I choose the custom URL. I've already downloaded the Gradle distribution to my computer. I will just provide the path to that. Click Next and then Finish. Now, the first thing to do is to set the location for the Java development kit, which is Java 1.8. I already added it before. Apply and OK. Okay, on the left-hand side, go to the source folder, main project, and then open the script. And you can see it already has the, the default print hello world. And the script, of course, can also be executed in the DaVinci Configurator. You can see that we have automatically added the demo script project 
and also the simple Apple task. So right click and execute and you can then see the hello application printout. Now, of course, we want to do um, automation of the configuration steps. So I open my basic editor, go to the basic software module, the first one, go to the general container. And here we have different elements that we can now work with. So we have, for example, checkboxes, we have drop down lists, and we also have a field where we can enter some value. I will take in now these three as examples to create scripts to modify the values that we see here on this window. I will start with the, with the generic request enabled. We can take this parameter. It's right now set. We will try to set this to false in our script. Start by switching the, uh, the task type to DV project because we already have a project open. An application project could work with multiple uh, projects. So here we will start by creating a variable for the BSWM module object PSWM model PSWM and we add single because we only have one instance of the BSW model. We will then access the container BSWM general. So BSWM general and then we need to define a variable to access the parameter that we want to modify. So let's call it build general dot generic request enabled. And now we want to check what is the value and then we want to modify this. So I have an if statement. I want to check first if there is even in fact uh, a value that has been received in the object that we created. So, so I use has, has value to check that there is some content. And then I use I check if it has been set to true with the get value function. Fix that. Okay. So if the if it has a value and the value is true, then we want to set the value to false. Dot set value and we say false. Before we make changes to this parameter, we first need to set it as a user defined parameter. So before we do this block. You also have to open a transaction block before you make any write or write changes to the AutoSum model. And within this, we will then set the user's defined state to true. So we're able to make modifications. And then I will, of course, move this back here to set the parameter to false. I will execute the build. Okay, switch to the DaVinci configurator. And now you see we have been able to make a modification to this checkbox. Let's look at the uh, the drop-down list next. So I go back to my J idea. So we'll again create another parameter. Let's call it action list. We'll use the previously created object to access the container. Yes, action list queue algorithm. Now, when you put your mouse here, you don't get much information about it. Uh, if you want more information, you can always download the sources. For this, you click on the on the control button on your keyboard and then click on the parameter and then select download sources. Once it downloads the sources, you will get more information when you hover your mouse to understand, okay, what values does this parameter accept, for example. So now that the downloaded sources are downloaded, you put your mouse here and you can see much more information. And of course, the two possible values for this parameter. Next, we want to make a comparison. So it's already linear search is equal to action list dot get value. So if this is the case, then we want to change it to the other algorithm priority queue. So I open a transaction block as before and then say action list dot set value. And we can again use the, the parameter type here dot priority queue to set the value. Let's now build again. Switch to the Levinci configurator. Let's go back to script tasks. Execute. And now you see it has switched to a priority queue. 
Now let's look at the third one, main function period, time period. It's in milliseconds. We can of course look at the definition. The base unit is seconds, so we need to take care of that. And also type is float. So switching back to the editor, we'll now work on the last element. So again, we will create a variable. Let's call it main function period. We use again the previous object that we had created and main function period. We can open a transaction block again, dot get. So we get the value and then set it to, remember we had the, the it's in milliseconds. So I use 0 0.005, this should be okay. Let's build again. Now we will be able to execute this. And now it switches to five milliseconds. And we notice now that there seems to be an error at least. So there seems to be an error, BSWM 94990. But this is good. This uh, allows us to show you one more thing. So we can also automatically fix errors via scripts. So wherever you have the auto solve option, you are able to also write a script to automatically solve the auto solve or trigger the auto solving at least. So let's go back here to the script. We will then open a validation code block. And within this, we'll define um, a parameter, for example, validation, auto solve. And then we need to first collect all the results that are seen in the, in the window. And then we need to, of course, filter out the errors or warnings. So we open another block and then we check the ID. So we compare the ID. So it was a BSWM error and it was 94990 was the auto solve code for this error. So, so we have filtered out and now we are checking this. So we will check now for every single, well, auto solve, yeah. So for every single one of the entries, we will check if the one that we want is active. So is it not active? And if it is, we will then trigger the auto solve action. So preferred auto solving action dot solve. And now let's trigger the build again for this. Go back to the scripts, right click, execute. And now you see that we have triggered the auto solving action, performed the auto solve action as well via the script. I hope this video helps you to get started and gives you a little bit confidence to start writing scripts on your own and also execute them either within the GUI or they can also be triggered via the command line WC configurator option as well. Thank you for your attention. Have a good day. Bye-bye.